Hello and good morning. We're going to do the practice test for Chapter 3 Geometry. Let's take a look at these, okay? Now pay attention. And make sure you study this weekend. Your test is Monday. So here we go. Number one, write a rule in function notation. to describe a transformation that is a reflection. Reflection across the y-axis. So number one, draw a little graph, put your y-axis right here. If you look at the y-axis, okay, you're gonna reflect a point from here, say over here, okay? Now, in order to go across that, you have to describe what this y-axis is. So if you look here, this is like x equals 2. It's vertical. Remember, x equals 2 looks like the y. So x equals 1 is right here. And therefore, x equals 0 is the y-axis. So the answer for number 1 is a reflection over the y-axis would be x equals 0. Okay, it's kind of weird, but that's the way it is. Watch again. That's x equals 2. That's x equals 1. That's x equals 0, which is the y-axis. So x equals 0 is the y-axis. Write that down. Make sure you know that, okay? So if they want to go over the y-axis, you have to put the line y, uh, x equals 0. All right, it's kind of strange, but that's the way it is. Watch the next one, number two. The vertices of a triangle are given. You want to reflect it over the line y equals x. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, and you can double check it, that y equals x, what you're going to do is switch them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is switch these. So if you look, we're going to switch them. So the first one, P is negative 8 and 6. Therefore, P prime is going to be 6 and negative 8. Switch. Okay? So remember, the line y equals x looks like this. It's a 45. In order to reflect it from here over to here, you have to switch the x and the y. And you're going to do that for each one. So Q prime would be negative 3 and 1. And then finally, r prime would be negative 3 and negative 6. So all you do is switch to go over the 45-degree angle. This is called a 45-degree angle. Okay? All right, let's go on. Number three, the vertices are that. Name the reflection of y equals 0. Look here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is y equals 2. Remember, y equals 2 it looks like the x-axis. This is y equals 1. So y equals 0 is really the x-axis. Write that down. y equals 0 is really the x-axis. And you need to know that. Again, that's weird. Watch. y equals 2, y equals 1, y equals 0 is the x-axis. So for number 3, or rather number... Let's see where we are here. Okay, this one, all right, let me back up. This one says y equals 0. Well, y equals 0 is the x-axis, okay? So when you reflect it over the x-axis, you're going up and down, and that changes the y, okay? I was thinking a different problem. So what we're going to do here for number 3 is change all of the y's because you're going up and down, you see, when you reflect it over the x-axis, which y equals 0 is. Okay, anyway, so p prime is going to be negative 3 and negative 8. q prime is going to be negative 6 and 4. And then finally, r prime is going to be 1 and negative 1. Make sure you understand what I'm doing there. <clears throat> okay, so y equals 0 is the x-axis. And in order to flip it over the x-axis, you're going up and down. Therefore, you have to change the y. Let's go to number four. 
All right, the vertices of the triangle are that. This one is x equals 0. Okay, we'll look here. For number 4, x equals 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. x equals 0 is the y-axis. So x equals 0 right there is the y-axis. And when you reflect over the y-axis, okay, you're going sideways. And a sideways move is an x move. So you want to change all the x's. So on this one, you're going to have P, Q, and R prime. And you're going to change your x's. So for number 4, you're going to change your x to 2. This becomes a positive 2, and you're going to leave the y alone. You're going to change that to a negative 2, and you're going to change, leave that one alone. You're going to change that one to 1, and you're going to leave that one alone. And that's how you work that. Okay, But you've got to understand, when it says x equals 0, x equals 0 is really the y-axis. And that's kind of tricky, but that's what you need to know. All right, number 5. Write a rule... Um, write a rule in function notation to describe the transformation that is reflected across the x-axis. Okay, so if you're going to reflect over the x-axis, okay, you're moving your y up and down. Okay, so the reflection rule would be r of x, some point, is going to be um, r, and you're going up and down, so that's going to change your y. So it's going to be x and negative y. And, and negative y is really not a negative y. It's change the y, whatever the y is. So for number five, um, you're reflecting it. And uh, they're putting uh, y equals zero is what they're putting for the answer. And y equals zero is a flip over the x-axis. So this is the answer that they're putting, okay? This was correct here because you are going up and down. But this is the answer they want it. It's a reflection over the x-axis, so that is y equals 5, y equals 1, y equals 0 is the x-axis. And that's what they want for that one, okay? And those are kind of tricky, but make sure you understand what they're looking for, okay? Find the image after two reflections. Let's take a look at this one. I think it works best if you graph it. So go negative 2 and then down 1 and put a dot and then put P. Now we're going to reflect it, and it's kind of hard for me to see, but it looks like y equals negative 5. Okay, well, this is your y. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So this line is right here. So you're going to first reflect it over this line, y equals negative 5. When you do that, you have to count the spaces to that line. 1, 2, it looks like 3 spaces. So you're going to go 3 below. 1, 2, 3 below and you're going to put P prime. Okay, that's your first reflection over that line. The second reflection looks like X equals 1. This is your X axis. So you're going to go X equals 1 is this line right here. Okay, and now you're going to count the spaces to that line. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. It looks like 3 that way. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3 right here. So P double prime is here. Okay. So what we need to do now for number six, we have to describe where is this point. Well, this point looks like, and it would work better with graph paper, but it looks like it's over one, two, three, four. So it's over four this way, over four from the origin, and then down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it should be nine. Okay, so let's see what I got here. Let's see if my numbers are wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This one probably should have been down one more. Okay, you might want to get some graph paper on that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try number 6 again. Um, it would be nice if I had some graph paper, but I'm going to be careful again, or more careful. So watch. X and Y. Negative 2, and then negative 1 is right here. So that's P. Negative 2, negative 1. Now you're going to reflect it over y equals negative 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So y equals negative 5, this is your y-axis, is right here. So you're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4. I think I went 3 last time. 
So we want to go one, two, three, four right here. So we're going to put P prime here. The next line is X equals one. X equals one is right here. And we're going to count the spaces. It looks like one, two, three. Okay. So it looks like one, two, three spaces to that line right there. So you want to go one, two, three spaces this way and put P double prime. All right, I think we got it this time. So let's count. One, two, three, four. So it looks like over four. And then down, it should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and that is the answer they have. Be careful when you graph it, okay? I had to do that one twice, but there it is. And that's number six. All right, let's keep moving. Number seven. Number seven says, what is the reflection rule that maps this? All right, well, let's look at A. A is negative eight and one, and then A prime right here is one and negative eight. It looks like they switched them. They moved the one to the front and negative eight to the back. So that would be a reflection of y equals x. That's a 45. Remember the 45 here? If you're going to go from here over to here, you have to switch. And that's what they did here. And that's the rule. Okay? A reflection over the line, y equals x. Number seven. Number eight. Let's take a look at this one. So we got to name the rule. Let's look at P. Okay, so P is 8 and 4, and P prime is 8 and negative 12. So the question is, what did they do here? All right, let's take a look here. And uh, it's a reflection here. Okay, so what we're going to do is graph it. Let's see what it looks like graph. Okay, maybe that will help us. Okay, so over 8, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, over 8, and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot. That's P. This one's over 8 also, but down 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is P prime. In order to have a reflection over some line, it's got to be halfway. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 12 makes 16. So we want to split that up to 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It would have to be this line right here would be the line of reflection. Let me count and make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So your answer would be a reflection over the line. It hits the y-axis, okay? And it hits the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be y equals a negative 4 because it's at the bottom. It hits at a negative 4. Okay, and that is the answer to number 8. And the only way I got that one was by graphing it. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. Let's put a little mark by that one. So we want to go, he's standing at over 4, up 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. So this person is here. Put a J right there. And then he's looking, he sees a reflection of this person. So negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this person is here. Okay, Parker, I guess. Okay. In order to be a reflection, it would have to be over this axis right here. Okay, so for number 9, um, <clears throat> what you want to do is, uh, is go, instead of 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, you want to go 3 to the right. It's three spaces to the y-axis, okay? It says it right here, the y-axis is the mirror, okay? So this is the line of reflection. So it's three spots there, so you want to go one, two, three spots here, and that's going to be the point right there. So that point is going to be over three and then down one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's over three, but down six. And that should be the answer for that one, okay? That one's a little weird, but that's the way it is. It says Y is the mirror, okay? The more you rework these, the more you will remember them, okay? Number 10, describe in words the translation of X represented by that translation. Well, what you're doing on number 10 is 
you're going two units to the left. So two units, number 10, two units left and eight units up, eight units up. So this is a translation. You're moving it to the left, two, and then up, eight. And that's all you do for that one. Let's go to number 11. We're at about 15 minutes here. Jessica is sitting in row, let's see, we're going to go over nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up, one, two, three. And we're going to put Jessica right here. Okay, at a soccer game. She discovers that her seat was in row one, seat one. So over one, up one is here. This is where she should be. Okay, question is, how do you get there? Write a rule to describe the translation, which is a slide needed to put her in a proper seat. Well, let's see how far away she is. She's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So she's eight, but that's in a negative direction. So she's got to go eight this way. So the translation would have to be a negative eight on your X. And then she's got to go down two, it looks like. So that should be a negative two. So for number 11, it should be a negative eight, negative two. Okay, that one wasn't too bad. Number 12, use a transition rule to describe the transition of P that is six units to the left and six units down. Okay, so for number 12, all I want you to do is put a translation. Six units to the left is a negative six, and six units down is a negative six. And that's all I want you to do for number 12 is to just write it like that. It, it, it will be multiple choice on your test, okay? So you're going to pick the best answer. Number 13, I worked one like that on the bell work, so I don't want to do that again. All you're doing is moving it from the no prime, the pre-image, to this one right here, and you just pick a point. Like this point, D to there, you, it looks like you're going. Now, be careful. Each one of these is worth two. So if you're moving it, that's... Um, here it is, so that's one, two, three. It's actually three to the left. So for number 13, it should be a translation, three to the left, because each box is worth two. Make sure you know that, okay? I mean, look at how they count it, two, four, six, eight. So be careful, that's tricky. And then this one is up, one, two. So that's gonna be a up two, so that's a positive two on that one, okay? So I did work it anyway. Number 14, Write a transition rule, eight units to the right and two units down. Okay, that seems like a pretty simple one. So it's going to be a translation, rather, and it's going to be eight units to the right, so that's a positive, and then two units down, that's a negative. Okay, so number 14 is pretty easy. Number 15, the vertices are that, okay, it's a rectangle, and uh, you have a translation maps R to the point of that. Find the translation, okay? So maps point R. So point R is here. So let's see what's going on. So we're only looking at R here. So you go on negative five, one, two, three, four, five, and then down one, two, three, four, five. So that's point R, okay? And then the next point is negative four, one, two, three, four, up two. Question is, how do you get from here to there? So it looks like you got to go over one for number 15, and then you got to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the translation from R to R prime would be over one and then up seven. Okay, be careful with that one. Number 16, write a rule to describe this. Well, you're going five units to the left. So that's a negative. So the translation would be a negative five and seven units up is a positive. Okay, that's another easy one. Number 17 is a composite. We did this one on the bell work. All you do is add up your X's. So for number 17, you're gonna get a translation. Um, 10 plus two is gonna give you 12. And then you're gonna add up your Y's a negative six and that looks like a negative three. So I guess that's a negative nine. And that's how you do number 17. So that one's pretty easy too. All right, look at number 18. Find the translation rule that describes B to E. Here's B. And where is E? E is way up here. Now it doesn't look like they're going sideways. 
So it's going to be 0. Let's see if they're counting by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8. So you got to be careful, okay? So you're going from here all the way up here. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and then half of 1 is really 1. So that should be 15. So it should be over 0, over 0, but up 15. Let me just verify that one. And that one is correct. All right, number 19, you're going from C, um, C under the translation described by that. So you're going over 4 and up 5. So here's C right here. So over 4, remember each one is worth 2. So that's 1, 2, 3, and then 4. It looks like over 4, and then up 2, 4, 5. So over whatever I said, let me see what I said, 2, 4, over uh, 5 on that one. Let me see what that is. Number 19. Okay. That would be point E. Okay. So if you go over 4 and up 5, that would be point E. And that's the answer for number 19. So point E is what they're looking for. Point E. All right. Let's flip this thing over and try to finish this up. Number 20. It says... Which graph shows? Now, it looks like it's got to be a selection, but let me take a look at it. You're going to move it to the left, 3, and then up 3. So it's going to be here, and each one is worth 2. So be careful. Each box is worth 2. And you want to go to the left, 3. So here, you're going to go over 1, 2, 3, which is right there, and then you're going to go up, it looks like 3. So one, two, three. So point C prime would be here. Now apparently you had to select and there are no choices, but just understand that you're looking for a, an image that goes from the pre-image somewhere over here. Okay? And each box is worth two. This one's the same way. This one you're gonna go negative four. Okay, so you're gonna each one is worth two. That's kind of tricky. Um, so here is C, so you're going to go to the left, two, uh, 4. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. You're going to go there. And then you're going to go up 2, which is 1, 2. So it should be there. So you're looking for an answer that moves C from here over to here. And that is, well, there's some more. Write the composition. This is kind of hard for me to see. That looks like a negative 6 and 6. So a negative 6 and 6 on your x's is going to give you a 0. And then uh, 2 and negative 3 is going to give you 2 plus a negative 3 is going to give you a negative 1. Let me check that one. And that is correct. And then the last one is the same way. You're going to add up your x's if you can see them. Um, that looks like a negative 6 and 5. So that's going to be a negative 1. So that's going to be a negative 1 when you add up your x's. And then this is going to be a negative 7. And let me verify that. And uh, that's what they have. All right, so this is your practice test. You can see there are some in here you have to really think about. Okay, but again, your test is going to be multiple choice. You're going to get two shots at it. So good luck on your test Monday. Study on Sunday for sure.